Welcome to Whispering Loudly, the award-winning workshop whisperer podcast as featured by Apple with Rachel Evans, the number one automotive business coach in the aftermarket. Thanks to titanium sponsor, Mechanic Desk and gold sponsor, Podium. Whispering Loudly is the workshop whisperer podcast. Hi, I'm producer Mel. Please go on to your app where you listen and rate and review the podcast. That really helps us with our ranking in the charts and we're doing really well. We are the number one automotive podcast for the aftermarket in Australia and New Zealand and I am joined by the number one automotive coach in Australia and New Zealand for the aftermarket, Rachel Evans. Hey Rach. Hey Mel, how are you? Good and we are super excited to have Stuart Charity and Leslie Yates on the show today and they are from the Australian Automotive Aftermarket Association. The Australian Automotive Aftermarket Association is the National Industry Association representing manufacturers Manufacturers, distributors, wholesalers, importers and retailers of automotive parts and accessories, tools and equipment, as well as providers of vehicle service repair and modification services in Australia. The AAA <laughs> has a membership of over 3,000 businesses and plays an important role in the recognition, development and support of the industry. It also acts as the voice of industry to government and has a track record of successful campaigning and influencing government policy and programs to support and grow the industry. Thank you so much for joining the pod. So why don't we start off by you each just giving us a quick rundown of the role that you have with the Australian Automotive Aftermarket Association. Leslie, would you like to go first? Thank you, Rachel. What a pleasure to be here with you. I'm the Director of Government Relations and Advocacy. and It's a big title, isn't it? But effectively a job to talk to members, talk to government about things that that we need them to do to support our industry. So lots of kind of pushing up issues saying this is important to us, it should be important to you too. And the other side of that, the flip side of the coin, is really defending our industry against impending threats. So pushing up stuff that matters and that we think is important and making sure that government doesn't do things that hurt our industry. Wonderful. And Stuart? Yeah, thanks, Rachel. Great to be here and we really appreciate uh, the opportunity and, and, and your support of all those wonderful independent workshops out there. So my role is uh, CEO, so I oversee the, the operations of the AAAA and, and, and really we're about providing a whole range of different support in different areas. Leslie uh, looked after government relations and advocacy, but obviously many of our members are small businesses, so we're... Uh, supporting them in a whole lot of different ways. We're looking into the future to see what's coming down the line uh, and, and providing market intelligence and information to help our members adjust and, and so on. And I've been in the role now for 15 years and, and, and just love what I do because, you know, our industry is made up of such talented and, and, and passionate and great people. And, you know, we want to do everything we can to help all of those businesses um, not only survive, but prosper into the future. And what do you think the AAA makes possible for our independent auto repair shops? I think at our heart, our our association is all about being the voice of the industry to to the government. So there's a whole lot of threats that are coming down the line that could spell kind of disaster or they could be turned into opportunities depending on how we collectively handle them as an industry. So, you know, things like... uh, Changes in technology. I mean, vehicle technology is is going ahead at, at, at breakneck speed, and that has implications from a, from a repair and service point of view. There's there's things like um, uh, alternative fuels. So there's a lot of talk about electric vehicles and and, and other um, other new powertrain technologies. What implications does that have uh, for, for workshops, both in terms of the skills and tooling required to work on those vehicles? But but where's the tipping point in terms of what you know the the vehicles coming down uh, the, the line. Where, where, when are they going to be? Well, when are independent workshop customers going to start asking whether that workshop can service their EVs? It's certainly not happening now. It's going to, it is going to happen. So, giving information on that, things like skill shortages. Uh, you know, we've, we've got we're one of the most impacted industries from a skills point of view. We've got a big uplift, uh, obviously coming out of COVID, um, in, in in demand from from customers. But we we need those skills to be able to support. Uh, that, that, that growth in, in, in demand and, um, and we need new skill sets as well. And, and I think finally, the, the thing that we uh, really do is obviously the car industry play for keeps. They, they want to get as much of the service and parts 
uh, pie as they can, and and you know they've got a lot of tactics to try and drive customers into into dealership networks. So we're kind of the defender of our industry to make sure that uh, competition's great, but uh, as long as it's fair competition, and in a lot of cases it's not with the car industry. So uh, we do a lot about you know, shining a big light uh, on on some of the practices of the car industry and making sure. Uh, government and the regulators are aware of it. And I think, you know, I experienced myself when I owned my last shop and certainly with our clients right around Australia, the the difference that you were able to make for all independents, whether they're a member of the AAA or not, when it came to choice of repairer was just, you know, nothing short of remarkable for all of those little voices that didn't think that they had a voice. So on behalf of all of them, Thank you. Join our free Facebook group, Your Profitable Auto Repair Shop, and join in on the conversation with auto repair shop owners just like you globally. Let's talk about something that's quite topical at the moment because we are still uh, knees deep in a pandemic. How did you as an association fare with the onset of COVID and what for you in Melbourne was... uh, Quite a number of lockdowns. Were there some impacts there? Yeah, look, from, from a business point of view, I'll let um, uh, perhaps Leslie talk about how, how we kind of supported the industry through that. It was kind of the the, the, the worst time of our life and probably the period that I'm, I'm most proud of. But as a business, particularly located in Melbourne, we had the, the dubious honour of being the most lockdown city in the world. So, uh, yeah, we, we pretty well were in and out of lockdowns for an 18-month period. And that, that creates challenges for the businesses, obviously, we had to transition to the majority of our, our team working from home. We had to do that in a few days. Also, our association, a lot of our activity is, is based around bringing people together. You know, networking events, we do training, we do our, our automotive expo and, and, and convention and so on. So we, we haven't been able to do that. So we have to look at new ways of how we bring the industry together. So webinars and, and, um, and other information uh, regular information. I think the first webinar we did uh, when we were just the whole of Australia was going into lockdown in in, in March of 2020. Uh, we we had over 900 people on the webinar, and and um, you know there was a lot of fear and uncertainty and and so on. So just you know reassuring the industry that look we've had to make a lot of adjustments to to our business, but really it's all about realigning our our activities and services to to make sure that we support those small businesses in in what has been a, a Probably one of the most challenging periods in for anyone running businesses uh, in Australia in, in our living memory. But Leslie and her team take a, a huge amount of credit for for the support that we um, we, we offered up, particularly those uh, uh, independent workshops. We did some really some of the work that I think, uh, as with Stuart, that I'm the most proud of in supporting our our members through that process. And for us, it was about getting good quality information out and to make sure that it was specific to our members. There's really no point, Rachel, us sending out lockdown instructions for hospitality. The government were releasing huge tranches that covered every single industry. So it's stage one, stage two, stage three, different levels, you know, 1A, 1B. And it wasn't really the job of our members to go through that table and work out whether you were in this column or this column. So the for us, we just... We had our mobile numbers out. We were working on weekends. We were sometimes on a call between ourselves at five, six in the morning just to go through the tables, double check that we had the right impression and Mm. then just the members the bit that they needed to know. So don't, don't go through the whole website yourself. We've done it. Here's you, the information that's just about you, whether you're retail, are you selling parts, are you servicing vehicles, which state are you in, are you rural or regional, just making sure when anything changed, we put that back out again. And, oh, but Rachel, the feedback was unbelievable. So many. Yeah. Thank you so much. We stopped checking all those government hyperlinks. We just waited for yours to come in, and that's what we relied upon. So I think that was our great value add. And as Stuart says too, I think the webinars were were wonderful because it was just this sense that we're all in it together. I know Mm. not everyone is locked as Melbourne, but everyone suffered and we're all in this as an industry trying to support each other. I would agree with that. It's no accident that our industry was able to stay open in in some way, shape or form in every state and territory uh, through through every different level of lockdown, even if it was at at times for only emergency repair and maintenance. So we did a lot of, Leslie and her team did a lot of lobbying uh, very early on to make sure that government recognised the importance of 
uh, our, our industry, both from a repair and service point of view and then the supply chain of parts and accessories to the industry. So, you know, by and large, we, we, there's no doubt that the industry was impacted and, and impacted heavily, but we, we certainly fared a lot better than many other industry sectors and we were able to obviously bounce out of those lockdowns um, very strongly. So, you know, for, for, a, for an industry that's made up predominantly of, of, of small family-owned businesses, you know, I think I think pretty well all of them survived, or uh, well, most of them survived through the, 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 the COVID uh, couple of years, which I think is a great achievement. And I think, you know, just to speak to some of the independent shops, you know, waiting for your advice because everything else that was coming out was so confusing and jumbled, I can speak to that in our Facebook group, Your Profitable Auto Repair Shop. There's, you know, three and a half, four thousand 4,000 shop owners in there. And I know that every time somewhere went into lockdown, you know, somebody would say, do you know if we're allowed to operate? And, you know, a comment would come in soon thereafter. Uh, let's wait for the AAA. So, you know, it definitely had real world implications. And because of your work, I know like in our own client base, some of our clients for last financial year had their best trading year on record because they were allowed to stay open. So what you were able to do had massive, massive implications. Take a smoke out and review us on your Apple podcast app or wherever you listen. Now that we're, well, what we hope is a safer space now that we've had vaccine rollout and borders are open and people will start hopefully being able to travel around again, what do you think as an industry you would say are the positives or opportunities moving forward for our businesses? And what lessons have you learned at the AAA from this pandemic experience? I think there are lessons for all of us. I mean, you kind of hope so, wouldn't you, Rachel? Uh, I love that Never waste a crisis. Mm. So hopefully we something about ourselves, our resilience as humans, but also ourselves as businesses. I think that from, from our perspective in, the, in AAA, we, we really learned a lot about what is valuable to our members. You know, would it have been easy for us just to have said, here's the government advice, you know, you, you interpret it. You work it out whether or not you're open or not. And it was tough for us, I think, as a group to say, our reading is you're open. Here's very clear advice. And as Stuart said, we would ring government and we would say, this is our read. Please confirm it. We never asked them what they thought because they'd say shut. We'd say we are (laughs) reading your instructions in this light. So I think it really made you think about what is our value add? Just like every business that is in this industry, what are we really doing that's valuable? And, and just being a, a messenger isn't being valuable. You, we were relied upon to interpret, and that's risky. We were mm. frightened about stay open. Uh, we did all we could to check it, but we knew that it was no assistance to a member to say, oh, you know, on the one hand, on the other hand. So mm. I think it should about what is a value-add service, what are we really doing for members and mm. what would I want to do if I was in a workshop in, in Newcastle or Adelaide or Perth or in, in inner city Melbourne, what do I really want from you? So I think that taught us a bit of a lesson. Mm. Um, I think what we learned is that, you know, it's kind of a soft skill to be supporting each other but how much people value that. Mm. And look at that whole, we want to shop local, support our local businesses. And I think if there are lessons going forward for our members, it is it is about that, the local community, engaging with the local community, leveraging that and, and marketing as we are your local business and we want to stay open and we want to be supporting you. Because in some instances, those of us who were locked in our own lounge rooms, they were the only people we were talking to on a regular basis, you know, mm. the, to the market mechanic when I booked my vehicle in, um, that might have been the only other interaction I had with a human in 24 hours. So I think that sense of connectedness we've got to carry forward. Yeah. Amazing. Really, when you sit back and think about what a health crisis has actually brought to our lives and, and the, the ways that it's changed it, impacted it, so much change, but not all of it bad. Some of it, you know, on the humankind side, heartwarming. I think too, it was great to see how how quickly the the industry innovated as well. So mm. things like contactless pickup and delivery, a, a lot of businesses implemented online booking platforms and and other things. They they sanitised vehicles and, and made sure that they are protecting the you know, the health and safety of their uh, employees and their customers. So the industry did respond very very quickly and and um, and innovate as well. And and often that 
sort of best practice was shared amongst mm-hmm. you know, groups of workshops and, and, and the word got out. So, yeah, that that's no mean feat, again, to get so many small independent businesses uh, all, all innovating very quickly and, and, and changing to, to suit the circumstances. And we will need to be a bit more nimble going forward because things are changing pretty quickly in other areas. So I think mm-hmm. if we can take that, that sort of innovative approach to, to business going forward, I think it will... Um, Uh, serve the industry well. And I think when it came to even just small innovations, even around sanitising customers' vehicles, I think some of some of our clients stood back and went, why haven't we been doing this the whole time? When we wiped a, you know, a sanitising wipe over the uh, the dash and the steering wheel, they came out black and we've been touching this for years. I think it was a real eye opener. So I know that stuff is here to stay. Let's have a chat about the AAA Expo, which we're excited is hopefully going to go ahead in April of 2022, so not too far away. For our listeners that may not have experienced an expo, what would you like to let them know? Yeah, we're, we're really, really excited about it. Normally, the expo is every two years because of the restrictions. Um, it will be three years since our last expo, so which was 2019, but it it feels like about 13 years, I've got to say. But uh, yeah, for those that, that haven't attended before, uh, it will be from the 7th and 9th of April at the Melbourne Exhibition and Convention Centre. It, it's a it's a huge display. It's the, the, the biggest show of its kind anywhere in the Southern Hemisphere. We'll, we'll have, have over 300 uh, companies in, in the Australian Auto Aftermarket Expo covering the full gamut of, of, of automotive parts, accessories, tools, and equipment. So all the brands that, that workshops know and love uh, will be there. They'll have all their new product innovations. They'll have all their technical teams there. We also co-locate with the Collision Repair Expo. So the combined shows are about five acres of, of floor space. Uh, it runs over three days. Uh, and um, a big part of it is obviously the, the exhibition itself and, and, and the new products and, and all the information that goes along with that. But we also value add with a whole lot of other activities that, that, that happen in and around the show. So we have a, a very comprehensive seminar and education program and Rachel, you'll be presenting as part of that as you have done in previous expos, but a whole range of issues around you know technology, EVs, mandatory data sharing, skills shortages and, and so on. We'll be covering all of those key topics uh, that, that are on workshops minds. As I said earlier in the in the podcast, yeah, we, we think this is a really pivotal time in the evolution of the industry and, and business is going to have to start making decisions about how they position their business moving forward. So the theme this year is around the workshop of the future is here. We're not talking, when we're talking about workshop of the future, we're not talking you know, flying cars and 30 years uh, into the future. We're talking about what's happening with vehicle technology and its implications now and in the next few years. So things like mandatory data sharing, what does that all mean? Uh, yes, we've got a law through, but from a practical sense, what information are you going to be able to get? How are you going to get it? What tools and skills do you need? When's it going to be coming? And so on. So there's a whole lot of questions around that that we'll be able to answer. by you know, In April, we'll only be two and a half months away from the, the 1st of July, which is when the mandatory data sharing law comes into effect. So we'll be having a lot of information about that. EVs and alternative fuels, uh, uh, we'll have a, a, um, a, a pavilion. Uh, where we'll have subject matter experts talking about that. So, you know, in terms of volumes, um, how quickly are EVs going to come into the market? What impact are they going to have on on the ticket price from a servicing point of view? What activities are they going to change from a normal workshop point of view? We know EVs don't have a lot of parts that internal combustion engines have, but they have, there will be other service items that are required. Things like ADAS, Advanced Driver Assistance Systems, how to work with them, how to recalibrate them, where the business opportunity is, and, and, and some of the innovations around workshop and, and, and customer management. There'll be a big feature called Workshop of the Future. It, it will run over the three days and we'll have uh, regular presentations on all the, all of those topics. We'll also have a seminar stage in the show area and on, or on the show floor and that will have regular presentations and so on. So three days of, of education, products and, and networking and really getting the industry back together again. I think everyone can't wait for that. And the good news is it's all free of charge. Uh, so all of those activities, all the seminars, everything, for workshop managers and owners is free of charge. Yeah, for more information, aftermarketexpo.com.au and you can register there and 
uh, uh, register for the event and, and all the co-located activities. Sounds absolutely jam-packed, full of, of useful things. And, and some of the things that we get asked about most often at the moment is around EVs and, and what impact it's going to have and where can I get training. And it sounds like it's going to be uh, super relevant for everyone as well as the business sessions. So... Excellent. Can't wait for that one. Join our free Facebook group, Your Profitable Auto Repair Shop, and join in on the conversation with auto repair shop owners just like you globally. Finally, guys, moving out of COVID, what advice do you have for our businesses stepping back into normal trading after what has been an absolutely unhinged period for everyone? I think there are a few things going forward, Rachel. I think the comment that you made earlier about the sanitising of the steering wheel and the shop you get when you wipe that down as someone who frequently uses hand cream at the traffic lights I fully understand that (laughs) Um, so I do think we have to think about what what things that we put in place during COVID that we want to continue so a workshop conversation about these are the things that we we're going to run forward I think some consumers did like contactless. I think it's worthwhile thinking about that, which consumers just want to drop their key off and and pick it up without necessarily speaking to someone on a person-to-person. So are there COVID practices that are good to go forward because they give the consumers some confidence and it just fits their style? I think the other message that we've got is that absolutely advocating hard on our skills crisis. Mm -hmm. Um, It is real. We, we're estimating between 25 and, th- and 30,000 employees short. That's across the whole supply chain and includes, you know, diesel mechanics and collision repair. So we're getting very close to, you know, being one staff member short for pretty much every workshop out there. So look after your team. <laughs> Be flexible and accommodating. It's going to take you a while to replace a valued staff member. So I know, Rachel, we're good employers and, of course, we look after employees but just being mindful that if you are down a staff member you're going to have to be very creative about filling that spot I think another message that's important is for every business is that we know everyone's overloaded that's the message that we're getting from everyone at the moment is they're booked solid yeah and I Despite the fact that workshops are booked solid, that every business is, whether you're a hairdresser or a car repair business, still be kind to your customers. Don't don't mm. treat them like lucky to get in. I know that's true. They are lucky to get in. But I still think we need to be as respectful and kind and accommodating as we can possibly be. And people will be very patient with a long service time, but not if you are, are quick and you're overly efficient about that. Be kind. I understand you've got some concerns. You need to get your car in. I'm doing the best that I can for you. Because while we're right now we might not all we might not be the case in another couple of months so Mm. be kind that you come across i think we also learned something about our resilience and i think it's worthwhile having a a conversation with everyone in the business about what that means going forward Uh, i think once we all of us are thinking you know what if i got through the last 18 to 20 months i can pretty much do anything Absolutely. I think, a, yeah, I think it's worthwhile for us all to have that conversation. We made it. How do we find a way to celebrate that? But also what have we learned about ourselves as, as people and businesses about being resilient? And as Stuart said, we should celebrate our ability to pivot. We were amazing in the ability to come up with a response to COVID and stay open. And very few sectors did as well as Yeah, 100% agree. And there's definitely things that we'll remember for the wrong reasons, but we've got a lot to be proud of and and take forward with us as well. Leslie and Stuart, thank you so much for taking out time for our Whispering Loudly audience today. Thank you for everything that you do for the industry in general. And uh, we're really looking forward to seeing you in person at the Expo next April 7 to 9. Thanks for listening to Whispering Loudly, the award-winning workshop whisperer podcast as featured by Apple with Rachel Evans, the number one automotive business coach in the aftermarket. Thanks to Titanium sponsor, Mechanic Desk, and Gold sponsor, Podium. 